Good evening, and welcome to the July 20th, 1993 Cape Elizabeth Planning Board meeting. The first order of business this evening is to uh, move on the minutes of the June 29th special meeting uh, of the Planning Board. Any dis uh, discussion, comments, motion? Judy? Mr. Chairman, I have several comments to make. Okay. Um, let's find the first page. Um, page six, second paragraph that starts Ms. Lardner. Um, I'd like to say what I thought I was saying, and if the board disagrees with that's what I actually said, I will agree to leave it as is. My intention would be more that it would read, Ms. Lardner said that one of the goals of these restrictions might be to make non-conforming structures eventually obsolete and abandoned, in which case there shouldn't be any expansion allowed. I didn't mean to say that was the intent of the town, that that is one way to look at regulations dealing with non-conforming structures. I don't know if that is what I actually said, and if the board thinks I didn't actually say that, I'll agree to let them stand. When I read through this, um, I made note of that, saying, well, I, I don't think, and I, and I remember when you said it, I sort of had to do a double, double take, um, and I don't know exactly what the tape says, but I, I, uh, I think we should change it to what your intent was, mm -hmm. and, and I don't think the intent was what is how it comes out here. I, I think you're close to this language when you said it. Well, I heard gasps in the <laughs> audience. My, I guess I was trying to point out that that's one way to look at these <coughs> kinds of regulations in general, that you're trying to make these structures go away in essence. I don't know that that's the towns. And then I was trying to say the flip side is that there are private property rights and those also need to be protected. I don't know if I said that right. actually. Well, how would the that first line change if you were to well, make what it I, what you intended to say? What I said was that um, Ms. Lardner said that one of the goals of these restrictions might be to make non-conforming structures eventually obsolete and abandoned, in which case there shouldn't be any expansion allowed. I know I spoke very strongly, and that to me is still strongly, but I, I really didn't intend to say the mm -hmm. R restrictions, one of our goals was. Okay. So the first line would change the scratch is and put might be. Yes. Second line, after the comma, and there shouldn't be. How would that re be rephrased? In which case, in there which shouldn't case? be any expansion allowed. And in which case? Have that else? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, on the fourth paragraph, just a typo and code enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. um, on page seven, down um, one, two, three. About the eighth paragraph that starts, Ms. Lardner favors draft, it should be Ms. Lardner favors draft B. And then I would revise the rest of that sentence to read, um, but would favor increasing the allowable living area expansion in a critical wetland to 30% instead of 25%. I just was speaking that the percentages should all be 30% for clarity. I wasn't suggesting that anything be changed other than the percentage in draft B. Okay. Keeping that sentence as is, is brief, but reflecting what you said, how would that read? Well, what I wrote it that way as the clearest way I could say it. And okay, what I'm I sorry. said, and you can change it, was Ms. Lardner favors draft B, comma, but would favor increasing the allowable living area expansion in a critical wetland to 30% instead of 25%. On page eight, I believe in the eighth paragraph, there's just a typo in the fourth line. Footprint can be expanded instead of expended. In the tenth paragraph, which is, starts with um, C, the last line, um, or I guess the last clause in a sentence says, if the structure was in a critical wetland, it, and I believe it should be, the footprint cannot be increased in accordance with section A1. It would read cl more clearly if that is the intention. And um, some comments on the final page, page 12. The fourth paragraph there says there was a vote 3-2 in the negative and the motion did not pass. 
I know I was voting against that motion, and I couldn't remember which, whether it was you, Mr. Edsel, or someone else that did vote for that motion. Because I don't think I voted. I voted for the motion. Okay. I was not uh, in the negative. So my name should be where yours is. Right here on page 12. And the last one, as I was hoping Mr. Emery would be here, but where Mr. Emery amends his motion toward the end of that page, it didn't mm -hmm. read very clearly, and one suggested rewriting of that would be, under the definition of floor area, there was not consensus as to whether, and then I skipped all the way down to the end of that, as to whether areas should include barns or garages and basements, either finished or unfinished. There was consensus that it shouldn't include decks. I, I wasn't sure what those three lines in the middle really did other than confuse um, his amended motion. <coughs> okay. Uh, um, other than I want to make sure that it reflects what's on the tape. Yes. That's what, of course, what is what Alice l listens to. Um, do you remember, Maureen? Um, or Alice. In other words, uh, understanding that you understand what what Mr. Emery was was uh, amending, um, I don't necessarily want to change the record. Um, uh, if that's actually what it says on the tape, Under the, where do you where do you see the? Well, I guess when, and just looking this at this grammatically. Under the definition of floor area, there was a not agreement that, and then if I finish reading it, I'm not sure what one's agreeing. It doesn't seem like a real sentence to me. And the second sentence specifically states where consensus was not reached and where it was. So I, I, that first sentence in there, I'm really not sure what it's supposed to be saying. And if that's what was said, I have no problem leaving it there. But reading it doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense to me. I'd, I'd I guess in this case, I would, would just, is it possible for Alice to review the tape? Okay. Shall we hear what Tom thinks about what he said? Uh, and, and I'm not, not denying no, what you're saying. It's just that I, I don't uh, necessarily think we should change the record a great deal. Okay. Uh, and this is not a real crucial issue anyway, but um, to take out two or three lines uh, could substantially change the record. Um, let's just leave it as um, when it becomes a part of the motion to review that paragraph of Mr. Emery's okay. motion. Um, and perhaps you might confirm it with him. Okay. Or try to. Anything else? No. Page three. Steve. Third paragraph. Um, I believe there's a typo there. Uh, Dr. Gramsci said he felt he had to proceed instead of had, had to proceed. Any other changes? This is a very good job, Alice, um, considering the um, detail of that uh, last meeting and, and uh, uh, the sometimes contorted uh, discussions <laughs> that we got into uh, in reference to that, uh, that article. Any other discussion, changes, comments? Do I hear a motion? Stephen? I'd like to make a motion to accept the no, uh, the minutes as revised. It's been moved. Is there a second? Moved and seconded by Mark. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Those opposed, it's unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Next order of business is uh, correspondence, and we just have a very short list, uh, a letter from Peter Malia uh, referencing Beale's ice cream, which was an application uh, that had been before us and was denied, I believe. Um, and they are, it was tabled, I'm sorry. Um, but it was tabled without consensus of the, 
Uh, my the, memory serves that it was tabled two months ago, and it was tabled to the June meeting. And at the June meeting, Mr. Melius submitted a letter to us requesting that it be tabled to the July meeting because he hasn't had time to put his plans together. So it's been tabled. It was by consensus moved to this meeting um, rather than by a specific vote. And he is again requesting that it be moved forward another month so he has time to prepare his plans. Okay. Um, that, of course, doesn't require any uh, action. Um, I just make it a note to the planning board. Um, as uh, historically, we sometimes see uh, applicants continuously try to move uh, applications ahead. Um, next, a letter from Peter Kennedy in reference to the Highlands subdivision. Um, the way I read this letter is that uh, he feels because of the way the construction is proceeding, and the disturbed areas um, that were seeded, that uh, he is not uh, able to implement at once to take advantage of the longest growing season, end quote, uh, as was a finding of fact. Um, I thought that that was a condition, but perhaps it was in the findings of fact as well um, of the last approval of the Highlands. Uh, I'm not sure, did, did um, uh, our code enforcement officer receive a letter, a uh, copy of this letter? Okay. He's the person to watch that. Um, and lastly, on my record, is uh, a copy of the plaintiff's brief in the Shaw Sprague versus Town of Cape Elizabeth and the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board um, court case uh, for interesting reading. Any other additions to uh, correspondence? Anything else? Okay. This evening, uh, I will appoint uh, Peter Cotter uh, as a voting member. Well, I'll, I'll take your suggestion, Peter, and uh, I'll appoint uh, put uh, Bob as a voting member here, uh, having been on site. Um, all under old business, uh, and our only agenda item uh, of note uh, this evening, the Johnson office change of use request by Everett Johnson for a change of use from retail to office located at 300 Ocean House Road, site plan review, and I might add uh, public hearing, section 19-2-10. Um, the way I'd like to proceed, I think, is, is just to have the applicant come to the uh, podium, uh, introduce yourself. Just summarize the changes uh, that have been made to the plan, and then we will open up uh, to the vast uh, number of uh, public members that we have here this evening for public comment. Okay. Uh, my name is Everett Johnson. I live at 1235 Shore Road. I'm here tonight with my wife, Linda, my site planner, Keith Coleman, and my attorney, Gordon Scannell. And uh, what we'd like to try to do, it, uh, do is address the issues that came up at the uh, 615 planning board meeting and also at the site walk uh, that was conducted on the 22nd of June. Um, at those, uh, what, what really came up was uh, location of signs to be placed on the, uh, the actual site plan, review of slope stabilization and erosion control, review and detail of walkway and railing if required, uh, review detail of lawn and plantings, review detail of landscaping for existing concrete retaining wall and in parking areas in the rear of uh, 300 Ocean House Road, uh, indicate uh, on the site plan the, the runoff or the the direction of the uh, uh, runoff flow, and in general to address the issue of overall appearances and uh, uh, what the property will hopefully look like when we get finished with it. Um, all these issues are on the, uh, uh, the updated uh, site plan, which I have right here, and hopefully you have copies of. And uh, I can take them one by one or however you'd like to proceed from here. Why don't you just... Um Quickly summarize those, and then we'll get to. Okay. First one is location of signs. Uh, we're going to have a sign on the uh, the top of the front porch, and also hanging from the uh, uh, Route 77 side, and also a small sign post uh, directing traffic uh, uh, up the main driveway. And all those should be indicated on your plan. Uh, review of slope stabilization and erosion control on the uh, the north side of the property. Uh, Keith Coleman might be able to address this, but what we're proposing is uh, uh, use of turf stone uh, to assist in uh, 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 erosion control and uh, stabilization of that, that whole area along there. <coughs> Keith, you want to 
maybe say a few words about that. Uh, I think one of the concerns that the board had was the uh, erosion control and slope stabilization during the construction phase, and that will be provided by uh, putting hay bales at the toe of the slope during the construction. They will be in place, staked in until vegetative cover is consistent enough on the slope to hold any erosion that or any water runoff and uh, prevent any erosion that might occur. And to mitigate runoff in general, we decided to uh, go with the gravel uh, aisle um, for the traffic aisles and also to utilize a product called turf stone, which is basically a concrete block with an opening in it which allows rainwater and and so forth to permeate down into the soil of the existing sub-base gravel and not um, allow it to run off the wood if you had a impervious type of or a semi-impervious type of service like uh, asphalt pavement. So between those two uh, things we've tried to mitigate the uh, extent of runoff and to control any problems that may that may have occurred previously from erosion on the slopes and on the north side there. Uh, the next issue that we uh, uh, attempted to address is the uh, the walkway uh, uh, down between the two buildings and we've put in additional slope gradations and we have uh, tried to more clearly indicate where the handicapped accessible spots going to be and where the uh, walkway is going to be down all the way down to the uh, front of the building and also uh, indicated where the grassed in areas are going to be and uh, later on when we talk about the, uh, the plantings, we've listed on the plans exactly what, uh, what plantings are going to be along the front of the, uh, of the, of the building. Uh, the plants were selected based on uh, the closeness to Shore Road and salt resiliency and those sorts of things and they're basically junipers and uh, uh, small plantings along the front side uh, designed to really improve the appearance but also to prevent any, uh, any possible consideration of anyone parking along the front front of the building and that's what we uh, gathered from you folks as a major concern uh, from the site walk um, as far as the landscaping along the retaining wall what we plan to do is to put uh, uh, plant boxes along, along the top of the side rail that's on top of the uh, 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 retaining wall along Jonesy's uh, mobile station and the uh, parking area we think that that will uh, uh, improve the, uh, the overall appearance. It will hide the, the automobiles that will be parked on our side of that fence and, uh, in general, improve the appearance from uh, anyone who might just glance over there from Route 77 on their way through. Those are the major is issues that, that I think that uh, came to our attention anyway, and we're open to uh, go into more detail on those or any others that uh, maybe we've missed. Okay, um, why don't we take a, a little break here in that uh, it may be a case of formality, uh, but at this time I will open it, uh, shortly open it up for public uh, hearing. Uh, it has been advertised for public hearing, and typically at this time I, I, uh, I go over the rules of public hearing, but it appears that I may not need to. Um, so formally, I will open uh, this for public hearing. Any members of the public uh, who wish to may address the board. Seeing and hearing none, I will formally close the public hearing uh, and let's proceed. I think at this time the, the, the best format has been to uh, open up to the board uh, to ask questions uh, and get responses from the applicant. Any questions from the board? Um, just two things and I will be silent. Um, all of the parking, is that all going to be done in turf stone? That's the uh, intention, is to do just the parking spaces in turf okay. stone. Um, and that includes the parking behind 300 as well as 1235? Along the retaining wall, yeah. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, um, I don't know how to, if you can even answer this, but um, the boxes you're going to uh, put along the concrete wall, um, can we have some assurance that those will be planted every year as opposed to just the first year then sort of letting it slide? Uh, I don't know if, it, maybe if it's that much of a concern, maybe there's a, a method or uh, some sort of uh, 
agreement that could be signed by the applicant. I don't know. However, yeah, I don't want to, to make do a big deal out of it, but it, on the site walk, it became very evident to me that the um, that view from the intersection of Scott Dyer and Route 77, you look right into that area, and I think it would really be a real benefit to everyone if that, those were planted, you know, seasonally. Yeah, I think that the, the intention is to, uh, you know, they have the same concerns as you, I believe. They, you know, they want the property also to look nice and, you know, to look uh, welcoming to people who are driving down Route 77. So I think they'll, you know, they'll do their utmost to keep it uh, well maintained. That's it for me. Okay. Judy? Um, following up on that turf stone, are you saying that the access ways within the parking lot will be graveled and the turf stone will be only the 9 by 18 spaces? Yeah, that's okay. our... Okay, that's not clear from the plans. And I, I know um, there's some comments in this memo that you might make revisions to the plans. That's something I think should be clearly delineated so when you go out in the field, um, code enforcement or whomever knows yeah how it's supposed to be done. The other thing I was wondering was on your um, crushed marble planting bed, how are you going to contain the marble? I don't see any curbing or anything on the plan. Uh, we want to leave those two tar berms that are, that are in place mm -hmm. uh, right, right along Shore Road. There's, there's two of them there and mm -hmm. there. We think that that will hopefully prevent any uh, snow plow from scalping the whole thing right off. But uh, um, what we would do is... is uh, Probably uh, you know, the, the most uh, simplest way and, and, the, and the, um, the most widely used would be to put some sort of uh, edging along the plenty bit itself you know, by uh, some timber edging or maybe PVC uh, edging that could be uh, Stiff enough to hold back the monitor. That probably should be detailed. I know this one should be done. Yes, it should. That may sound like a minor issue, but the issue, and it's a good observation from Judy's point of view, to kick three quarter inch stone out into the, is a safety issue. It's not something that a container could just get screwed on. Those are my only questions. Mark, any questions? Peter, Bob, questions? I had a question on the, the, um, the sign appears to be off site, in other words, not on your, on the, the applicant's property. Have you uh, obtained any permission from uh, your, uh, your abutter for, for the sign to be there? Mm -hmm. Any cross easement or any, I, I'm not trying to make a, a difficult issue, but it, first thing popped in my mind, it's not on your property. Yeah. Uh, we've, uh, we've talked to Steve Virgilio, the, the owner of the Scout House property, and he's indicated that he would uh, uh, not have any pro he'd want to uh, uh, have final approval of the actual sign that we're going to put in place but he's told us both as far as the uh, additional easements that we need and also that that little sign directory for parking uh, he has no problem with uh, I, I might ask the staff uh, our planner um, to make a note of that when I think the easement will be suggested that there's re reviewed by a town attorney that you might add that in uh, a reference to maintain and, and uh, um, whatever um, the, 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 si the sign which is on your property I guess access to and maintenance of the sign <coughs> you mentioned the uh, soil stabilization and erosion control um, uh, during construction there's an issue also on an ongoing basis um, uh, again nothing's touched that those slopes for a while and, and they, they're sitting there uh, and we assume that once uh, you're done the construction it will restabilize and, and uh, slowly revegetate, re but uh, there is an issue of it, of it on an ongoing basis that, that we want to make sure that there's a, uh, some stabilization there. Um, again, I'm not going to make any additional condition. It's just a, an awareness that, uh, that I think the applicant needs to be aware after the construction is done that, that that's uh, uh, an area that needs to be watched closely. We, we did require um, some planning to, on the, the abutting site, uh, some type of uh, crown vescue, I think, but um, just a suggestion. Um, okay. It was unclear to me from from the uh, the plan which you had this whether you had decided on on a ramp which access whether you're going to go to the 
the door set back further from the street or the, or the front porch. Uh, perhaps you can tell me. It looks like you've left that option open to. It is, it's really not a ramp because it's not um, sloped enough or I, okay. steep enough to be, to be uh, categorized as a ramp. So you're going to categorize as a walkway. Reduce the slope so it can be used as a walkway. Yeah. That's, that's great. It's, uh, you know, it's flat enough now so it's um, accessible to handicapped people. Or, and we are going to have the access into the door that's back from the street, not the front. Great. Good. So we work that out with the uh, change of grade a little bit. And it doesn't have a handle on it. It doesn't require a handle on right. I think that's a good resolution to, to that, uh, just from a visual point of view, uh, if it can be in, in, uh, yeah. incorporated in the, the natural slope. Of, yeah, of the, uh, I guess I missed that. Any other comments? That's uh, all of my comments or questions for the moment. Seeing hearing none, uh, do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll propose Security? the following motion for the board to consider. Findings of fact, one, Everett Johnson proposes to convert retail space at 300 Ocean House Road to office space and to redesign the parking and access involving 1235 Shore Road, which requires site plan review under section 19-2-10. Two, specific construction details need to be included in the application to assure construction is in compliance with the approved plans. Three, because of the undelineated nature of the existing parking lots and driveways, which will probably need to be expanded to construct the plans, the construction plan should require additional sub-base gravel and new parking and driveway areas. Four, the applicant has submitted easements necessary to assure access as proposed across abutting properties, which have not been executed. Five, a method of solid waste disposal must be articulated on the plans to be in compliance with the environmental considerations of site plan review. Six, the applicant has substantially complied with the standards of site plan review. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Everett Johnson for site plan review of a change of use from retail to office at 300 Ocean House Road and redesign of the parking lot and access at 1235 Ocean House Road be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that construction details including corner radii and ramp details be submitted and approved by the town engineer. Further, that a note be added to the plans that a gravel base in excess of three inches be provided in proposed parking and driveway areas where there is no existing parking lot or driveway. Two, that the plans be revised to delineate the extent of the turf stone in the parking areas and to indicate the type of edging to be used around the crushed marble planting bed. Three, that deeds conveying rights to pass over and install a sign on the abutter's property be executed and submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney. Four, that a note be added to the plan that solid waste shall be removed from the property by the applicant and transported to the transfer station. And five, that all conditions shall be met prior to conversion of the site. It's been moved. Do I hear a second? Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? I have a, a, I, an item of discussion and, and uh, just like to, to bounce this idea around the board and then, then uh, perhaps uh, ask the applicant under condition number one, um, it says the construction details, including corner uh, radii and ramp details, um, number one, and it was just, I believe, on our podium tonight, um, the town engineer states that the, the, the radii are on the plan of the Vigilio uh, plan. Um, and I think he stated that he found those to be I'm sure they said he stated that they found them to be acceptable, is that they, they were acceptable before. Um, and that there is really no ramp, is my understanding. I think the ramp that this motion or this condition refers to is the, or was the handicap ramp. Uh, now, leave it open for discussion. Um, whether you want to leave that in there in, in case there's a ramp that's needed to be constructed. Um, the other issue deals with the, the uh, three-inch gravel base, and, and I, when I was considering that myself, and I know that was a staff recommendation, um, 
I, I think that that's a prudent request in the public area or the public access to the parking lot. Uh, I think it's prudent where the turf stone is not going to be used and it is not presently a, an existing driveway, gravel driveway. Um, the turf stone itself is a three and an eighth inch increase in or uh, added to, to that, that uh, base, if you will. Um, I might ask staff if, if when that uh, suggestion was made uh, that, it, uh, that you were considering the, the turf stone itself. The, there's a suggested uh, uh, construction um, or detail in, in the turf stone information that, that makes it more detail than that. But uh, uh, is there another way to state that so that, that, that the gravel base is only um, in other public area, other public access uh, driveway and parking where um, the existing parking is not now? You just say exclusive of the turf stone. Right? Okay. Might, I might suggest that. Um, I guess I would just ask Maureen, um, have the items on the June 8th memo of the town engineer pretty much been addressed now between this plan revision and his recent comments on the um, traffic report? I believe that the in the previous letter that is attached to let's see is that June 8th, the July 12th letter um, references the June 8th comments mm -hmm. and there were some miscellaneous um, what I would consider minor construction details that were still missing from the plan um, mm -hmm. and what I was trying to do is is write a, a, a potential condition of approval that would sweep in all of those minor construction details. Uh, at the same time, there were several issues raised by the town engineer regarding traffic, and I did not consider those to be minor issues. Mm -hmm. I did ask the, the town engineer um, to look at the previous traffic study, which for some reason was not in my files. Um, he did do that, and a lot of the, the traffic considerations that he was concerned with were addressed. For example, the site distance and, and the, the amount of additional traffic that was going to be generated. Most of that information was provided in that previous study, so there was no need for the applicant to come forward with that again. Um, certainly, you could change ramp to walkway. Um, there's still a detail that's needed for that area, um, and perhaps ramp was, was not an appropriate word for me to use. Um, but that was the whole intent, was just there, there are some minor new construction things that have not been uh, detailed to the satisfaction of the town engineer. Um, and in terms of, of the gravel base, the reason this was written is, um, I think especially if the board remembers some of the previous applications in this site, there seems to have been a continued problem with trying to delineate the change from the existing site to the proposed site. Um, because of the existing site and the way the gravel tends to extend into other areas, it's, it seems to be a constant problem with trying to show how the change is going to be made from existing to proposed. And it seemed that instead of continuing this debate of how to get the plans more specific, um, just to put a note on the plan that, that addressed the, the town engineer's concern that where you don't have a buildup of gravel currently, and you're going to have cars traveling, but there has to be some buildup. And that's, that's basically his concern. If there's turf stone there, then certainly that, that meets that, that, that need for a gravel buildup. Um, <coughs> I, uh, my intention, and I guess I, I didn't read it really clearly when I was um, going over this, is I would be happy to just say that construction details as requested by the town engineer be added to the plans and approved by him or something. I, my intention is that whatever he needs still gets put on there and I don't feel it has to be more specific unless other board members do. Would you like to eliminate the including corner radii and ramp details phrase? That would be fine as well as the excess of three inches of gravel because he does make a comment about um, uh, however, for those areas where parking and drives are proposed outside existing gravel areas, a more substantial buildup would be in order, which would include turf stone, and you wouldn't have to talk about a depth of gravel. And then to eliminate the in excess of three inches that a gravel base. That whole part. clause, yes. Would that address your concerns, Mr. Edson? My only question is what are we talking about for construction details if, if, if we're just leaving it uh, in, in 
generic uh, construction details and then taking out the spe uh, specific items. And um, we have a, a very good talent engineer, but he also um, Well, deals with a great deal of detail, and, and, and I'm not sure that I, I want to just do in a sweeping vote say all of these construction details are what this board uh, is going to require yes. um, when they may or may not be uh, necessary. Just, uh, Certainly, go ahead. Ramp walkway. I tried to address that in a note, which is the first first one under detail notes. Mm -hmm. Which basically states in text how the walkway will be constructed. Those pictures are all over. So we're kind of getting into the plan by plan. Hey, could you tell me? Okay, detail notes. Next to general notes is a. So it'll be four inches thick, 3,000 uh, PSI, something reinforced placed on six inches compacted gravel. Just because in order to put a wheel on it, it's a little bit detail. Right. I'd be glad to do a detail on it. That's feasible to submit one that could be part of the record on a smaller sheet as we'd like to Mr. Etzel, the issues that I see remaining from his June 8th memo that haven't been addressed would be under his driveways and parking section that some additional dimensions um, for the parking and driveway layouts, including corner radii, may be needed. He doesn't talk about the radii at the road. I, I thought that was within the, the parking area. He does mention that um, substa uh, more substantial buildup would be in order for areas not currently graveled and talks about requesting more details for the full depth construction um, in the limits of the full depth construction and asks for additional details on the ramp slash um, walkway whatever you call it I would only expect the applicant to address outstanding issues and if it would be better to be more specific I'd be happy to do that do you think it's necessary to to change the plan and include include the turning radii of the, of the various uh, parking spaces only if the town engineer I I don't know I usually go by what he requires and if town staff doesn't think we need it I don't <coughs> I, I, I'll go back to the applicant. Do you see that as onerous to to to, uh, to include the, the town engineer's request? Well, I, I think you'll find that if you take if you take a measurement, I'm sure you'll find that they are adequately just not visually shown. You know, I, I tend to, to agree and without just a sweeping vote of saying let's do everything the town engineer says and then sending these people back for a few hundred dollars more to change a plan. Uh, if the I don't feel strongly about this. I, I like to see the town engineer's comments addressed. If the board feels otherwise, I'm happy to remove that condition. I. I'm not an engineer, and I don't know how adequate the plans are. But I'd like to hear what other board members would have to say. Mark? Uh, yes, I think that within the parking lot, uh, the layout is such that uh, given the fact that the corners aren't curbed anyway, that it's probably, there's more than enough information here to see what would be on the face of the earth eventually. But I think the town engineer's note, and we've addressed that already, about the uh, entry and exit turning radius onto Shore Road, I think that is, that's important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything, Bob, Peter, any comments? Stephen? I, I guess if there's no, any detail that <coughs> you're concerned about, and I, uh, I concur with, with uh, Maureen that, um, the, dr the driveway, the delineation of the driveway itself, uh, and I think the, the language that 
the, the applicant suggested, um, the three inches, three inch base of gravel, exclusive of, exclusive of the turf stone area, is simple enough, straightforward enough, and in a, a reasonable request. Uh, other than that detail, I I, uh, uh, I don't see a real need for any other. Uh, we, we've dealt with the solid waste disposal. Um, traffic impact he has reviewed uh, and compared it to the, the abutting site's traffic plan. Um, there is some detail. Do you feel that there should be more detail to the ramp uh, note itself? Only if the engineer does or someone on the board does. I don't know. Well, I could propose to change my motion that um, number one would read simply that a note be added to the plans that a gravel base in excess of three inches be provided in proposed parking and drive driveway areas exclusive of the tourist stone area where there is no existing parking lot or driveway. Is that your intention? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll second it as amended. Okay. Any other discussion? No. Sir. Um, one of the conditions is that a note be added, um, and I think it's simple language that okay. that uh, the solid waste shall be removed by uh, from the property by the applicant and transported to the transfer station. Whatever's in the conditions, fine. Okay. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion uh, as amended, please raise your right hand. Those opposed, it's a unanimous vote. Congratulations. Thank but, you. Uh, uh, it's an important site here in this town, and, and uh, I think your site uh, plan will be a, a big improvement, and uh, we wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. That uh, ends the, the listed items on the agenda this evening. Before the board leaves, I'd, I'd just like, if, if Maureen, if you could just, the issue that we took up in special meeting, uh, wetlands, if Maureen could just, I think it's uh, interesting or important that, that the board be brought up to date where we, uh, very briefly, people are uh, inching out of their seats already, uh, just real briefly uh, go over where the, uh, the planning board is, I mean where the uh, town council is with that right now. Uh, the, the town council has recommended the issue to the ordinance committee. The ordinance committee met last week, and Mr. Retzel uh, attended the meeting. Uh, they plan to meet again uh, tomorrow night. Uh, since the discussion on, on last week, they have recommended several changes. I want to emphasize that this is all still in draft form, and it's still under discussion. But uh, since the board has made the recommendation to the council, the item number 11 that referenced accessory structures in the uh, chart at the beginning of the ordinance has been eliminated. Um, that, that section seems to be um, chronically misinterpreted and is functioning more as a low loophole than as what it was originally intended to do. Um, in the section 193912, the section the board spent the majority of the time on, which deals with non-conforming structures, uh, there's been a reference added to the assessor's property cards of April 1, 1990, to make it very clear uh, what building footprint is being referenced. Um, there has been a, an addition that if a variance or a use permit is needed, that a, an expansion of a non-conforming structure would not be allowed, um, uh, meaning that if you need some other types of of waiver of the zoning ordinance and you're already in a wetland buffer, then you wouldn't be allowed the, the footprint expansion. Um, in all areas where the board uh, increased the amount that would be allowed up to 30 percent, that's been changed back down to 25 percent. Um, under the section that talks about allowing expansion of structures in, in the buffer, not structures in the wetland itself, um, they're looking at two alternatives right now. Uh, one would allow uh, an expansion of 25 percent, um, but only a portion of that expansion, say 10 to 15 percent of it, would be allowed so that it was at the shortest setback of the existing structure. The rest of it would be allowed um, further towards the back of the structure. Um, I'm not quite sure how that, that would work. Um, 
the other alternative which was was discussed was finding a way to put an incentive in the ordinance that would encourage people to not increase their footprint and that would be to allow them the option of a 50 percent increase of living area instead of a 25 percent increase in footprint um, the other thing that's being dis discussed is making that a proportional um, ratio where if you only increase your footprint by 20 percent then you would allow some living area increase and um, that that's again getting getting into something that may not be able we may not be able to put in a clear enough form in ordinance language um, the potential for expansion of a structure that has been destroyed by fire um, has also that expansion has been reduced from 30 percent to 25 percent um, the final issue that's being discussed, which is probably um, something the board would be pleased with, is there's a proposal to delete the inverse setback provision altogether. Um, that because there's discussion about allowing expansions in buffer areas under the previous sections I just discussed, um, it no longer makes that much sense to treat structures within the 100, 100 to 250 foot area differently than structures that are in the uh, zero to 100 foot buffer area. So the, the previous section that talks about a 25 percent expansion would cover all of the structures in the buffer. Uh, so that uh, that is one proposal that uh, would actually probably make the zoning ordinance more user friendly. Any questions? Just a general question. Was there any real discussion about impacts on the wetland of all these things or are we? Oh yes. There, that's being considered. We um, were able to uh, review a video which I had just received uh, that talks about uh, stormwater impacts on wetlands, streams, rivers, and lakes. And so we, we did get to talk a little bit about stormwater and um, why you require a buffer and what it is supposed to do. I guess I'm specifically interested in the notion of whether increasing the usage of a home versus increasing the impervious surface um, if there is in fact perhaps not much impact of the first there are still a lot of there is still some concern that any increase in living area will also have an impact on a wetland not just increase in footprint but, but I think there's more um, there's more focus on the footprint expansion and I assume no discussion yet on decks versus patios that um, the last meeting we did agree that decks have to be addressed as part of, of this whole proposal because um, if we leave them the way they are in the ordinance right now, they would be regulated more restrictively than, than total footprint expansions. Okay, thank you. Just a comment, one comment that I have, um, <coughs> both attending the, the council meeting the night before and the ordinance uh, meeting, that, um, a part of the, the council um, response was, well, this is, this is the, the best that the planning board could bring forward to us, and it was, there was a consensus that there should be a, a lessening of, of those restrictions. Um, and there was another portion of the council um, that simply felt that that's the way they had drawn it up originally, and, and uh, um, they didn't see any reason why it should be made less restrictive. Um, and I, th I think there's some intent just to simply keep it the same as they originally intended. Um, be interesting to see how it comes out. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second it. All those in favor? Opposed. Good evening. Thank you very much.